Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Myself, I am Dr. Varishri, who is an associate professor at the Department of Biochemistry, Kasturba Medical College, Manipal. Today, I will be telling you something about a topic called as extended lipid profile. As we all know, lipids are one of the most important components, not only uh, the one which serves as an energy, but is also a structural component of various cell walls and uh, other structural components in our body. Coming to the term lipid profile or an extended lipid profile, it means it is a comprehensive tool which is used to either screen or to diagnose or further to monitor dyslipidemias. Now, what are these dyslipidemias? Dys can either be hyper or it can be hypo. Lipid is understood that it can be a fat or any other substance which belongs to the category of lipid. So, dyslipid is either an excess or a decrease in the levels of lipids in the blood. Emia stands for blood. So, dyslipidemia is either a hypo or a hyperlipidemia, either an increase or decrease in the levels of lipids in our body and that is seen in our blood. So, this includes not only the lipids, there can be abnormalities in the lipoprotein levels also. There can be a hyperlipoproteinemia or there can be hypolipoproteinemias. So, this is what is called as dyslipidemias. Now, if you look at something what is called as hyperlipidemia, now this is a serum sample in which if you look at the topmost layer of the vacutainer, it is milky. It shows that there is something related to the lipid metabolism which is abnormal. There is excess of chiromicrons in this case which indirectly means that there is an excess triacyl glycerol. This is how the serum looks like. Now, anything which will help us to diagnose this kind of an abnormal lipoprotein metabolic pathway is what is called as hyperlipidemia. So, hyperlipidemia to classify them or to uh, actually define them, these are nothing but the conditions of abnormally elevated levels of any or it could be all the lipids or it could be all the lipoproteins in the blood. Now, the problem with this excess of lipids in the blood is that uh, when they cross a certain limit, they are seen to be deposited in the arterial walls. Once they get deposited, if you look at the picture, you could see that the lipoprotein molecules are getting attached to the innermost layer of the arteries and they would hamper the flow of blood to the tissues whichever the blood vessels are supplying. Now, that is what is the consequence of hyperlipidemia. The term hyperlipidemia can be further classified as primary, which means that the cause is not known. Most of the times the cause is genetic or you could say that it is a genetically based cause which leads to primary hyperlipidemia. If you look at the other type of hyperlipidemia, that is what is called as secondary hyperlipidemia. This is secondary to certain diseases like these, diabetes mellitus or it could be thyroid diseases, renal disorders, liver disorders, obesity or when an individual is consuming excess alcohol that would all these all conditions would lead to an excess levels of lipids in the blood. So, these are the two categories of hyperlipidemias primary and secondary. Primary is where you do not know the cause, secondary is it is secondary to a, a disorder which is the primary reason. If we have to define lipid profile, these are the group of tests which are done to evaluate the levels of lipid or lipoproteins in the blood. This is what is lipid profile. Now, if you look at the purpose why lipid profile is being done, there are various purposes. First of all, if there is any abnormality that are related to the lipid or lipoprotein metabolism, you would like to detect it as early as possible. The purpose of early detection is that once you are able to detect it early, it can be prevented. So, early the better. That is why that would be the first purpose of doing a lipid profile in the blood that is for early detection and prevention of lipid and lipoprotein related abnormalities. The second purpose of doing a lipid profile is once you know that there is a chance of having an abnormality in the lipid metabolism, 
If you are able to prevent it, that would reduce the risk of developing atherosclerosis. Now, what is atherosclerosis? As I have earlier said, whenever there is an excess of lipoprotein, these lipoprotein have got a tendency to go and accumulate into the inner walls of the artery. When they go and accumulate in the inner walls of the artery, they never allow the blood to pass into the organs to which they are actually supposed to supply. That is where you have the consequence of atherosclerosis as coronary artery disease, where the artery which is supplying the heart is getting affected because of atherosclerosis and therefore, you do not have enough blood supply to the heart muscles and that would not be able to pump enough blood to the other tissues and finally, you might have a myocardial infarction. So, the first indication of doing a lipid profile is to detect and to prevent any kind of a lipid and lipoprotein related abnormality and the second purpose is that once you are doing this you are further preventing the consequence that is having an atherosclerosis or a coronary artery disease. Now, there are certain indications in which lipid profile has to be done. It is not a, it is not a must that every individual must undergo a lipid profile. There are certain people in whom it would be best if you could do a lipid profile earlier on in life. For example, there are healthy adults who do not have a known risk factor for having a cardiovascular disease. These adults are basically healthy individuals. So, in them as a routine health checkup, you could ask for a lipid profile. The second indication for lipid profile is that in individuals who have earlier done a blood cholesterol levels and if the values of cholesterol were above the normal, that is when the lipid profile is indicated. When they come to the hospital for the second time, it would be a must that the lipid profile should be done in these patients in whom the previous levels of cholesterol was very high when compared to the normal. The third indication of lipid profile is in individuals who have got risk factors of having coronary artery disease like if an individual is a heavy excessive smoker or there is an already a hypertensive, if individuals are having a sedentary lifestyle. And if the age is above 45 years, in all of these individuals, it is a must that we perform the lipid profile. Further on, in people who have got a family history of diabetes mellitus or those who have already had a blood test done in which uh, it was seen that there was a low levels of HDL cholesterol, whereas there was a high levels of LDL cholesterol. So, when you have a family history of diabetes, added to this, the values of LDLs were high and the values of HDL were low. In them, it is a must that we should do a lipid profile so that we have a follow up of these individuals. Further on, in individuals who are on a dietary or on a weight loss program, who are having a definite exercise regime or they are individuals who are on a lipid lowering medication. Now, lipid lowering medications are the drugs which are used to lower the levels of lipid. Uh, in them, we could ask for a lipid profile. Certain times, uh, when you have children, teens and young adults who are at a risk of having a heart ailment because of an excessive cholesterol, in them it is a must that we do a lipid profile. So, these are all the indications in whom we should be doing a lipid profile. Now, let us see what this lipid profile is. So, as I said, these are the tests which are done in the blood. We are looking at the various levels of lipids and the lipoproteins. We are looking whether if they are normal or if they are below normal or if they are above normal. So, they include many tests. The first and foremost important test which comes under the lipid profile is the total cholesterol level. The second one is LDL cholesterol. LDL stands for low density lipoprotein. Now, low density lipoprotein is a lipoprotein which is supposed to carry a lipid. Now, the one which it carries is cholesterol. The lipid which LDL carries is cholesterol. So, you could say the lipid profile what we measure in this case is LDL cholesterol. We are measuring the cholesterol which has been attached to the low density lipoprotein. The third one is HDL cholesterol. HDL cholesterol is high density lipoprotein. Now, to this is attached a cholesterol molecule. That is why we call it as HDL cholesterol. HDL is the lipoprotein and the lipid that it carries is cholesterol. Therefore, it is called as HDL cholesterol. Moving on, the next one is the triglyceride. Now, this is the fat which the humans consume a lot. It is the most abundant fat which we consume in our diet. So, if we are able to measure this in the serum, that would indicate how much is the dietary consumption of the triacyl glycerol. Triglycerides are otherwise called as triacyl glycerols. Apart from that, we have VLDL, which is also a lipoprotein. 
VLDL stands for very low density lipoprotein. And then we have the last one where you have a ratio of cholesterol to HDL. That would be a good indicator of the lipid status in the blood. So, these are all the tests which are a part of lipid profile. The topic what we are actually supposed to discuss is the extended lipid profile. Now, when we are able to extend the tests which are already listed, if you are moving away from this, it means that we need to add some more tests so that we could extend the lipid profile whatever is existing. So, if you have to extend that, it would be good enough that if we are able to measure the apolipoproteins which are associated with these lipoproteins, that would be a better indicator of the risk of having a coronary artery disease. So, whatever has been discussed so far is what is called as the, the lipid profile which is routinely done. Now, when we are moving away from this and adding a little more test to this, for example, if I am adding apoproteins to this and if I am adding lipoprotein A, if there is addition of high sensitive C reactive protein, these are all the other tests apart from the normal lipid profile which belong to the category of extended lipid profile. So, there are two terminologies now. One is what is called as lipid profile, the other one is the extended lipid profile. The one which you see is the normal, the routinely done lipid profile and the other things whatever I have said, the lipoprotein A or the CRP, those are the additional profiles which could be added to the existing routinely done lipid profile. Now, if you look at the normal levels of these lipids in the blood, so the total cholesterol should be around 140 to 200 milligrams per deciliter. If you look at the TG, TG stands for triglyceride, it should be below 150 milligram per deciliter. The lower range for this is 60 milligram per deciliter and the maximum what an individual could have is 150 milligrams per deciliter. So, the expected amount should be around 60 to 150 milligrams per deciliter. So, that is triacylglycerol or triglyceride. Moving on to the third one, the amounts of HDL cholesterol should be between 40 to 65 milligram per deciliter. More the better, you have more amounts of HDL cholesterol, it is always good. So, anything above 65 is always good. That is ex one exception where we say that more is good. Now, if you look at the LDL cholesterol, the range is between 50 to 130 milligram per deciliter. It, we should not have the LDL cholesterol more than 130 milligram per deciliter because more is the LDL, more harmful it is. Low, more is the HDL, it is more good for us. More is the LDL, it is very bad. So, that is what is important out of this. So, we have the total cholesterol, triglyceride, HDL cholesterol and LDL cholesterol. So, the one which is very important is we should not have total cholesterol of more than 200. TG of more than 150, LDL of more than 130 milligram per deciliter. HDL, it should not be very less, it should be above 65 to have a good living conditions. Now, let us see something about these individual lipids, so that we understand why these uh, measuring these lipids are very important for us. Now, we know that cholesterol is a steroid, it has got a steroid nucleus in its structure. The reason why cholesterol is in our body is we always say that cholesterol is bad, but we must remember that cholesterol does certain functions in our body, that is why it is present in us. So, the most important function is that we all know that our body is made up of various cells, it has got various organs, tissues, etc. Now, to be having to have these cells in proper shape and structure, we need this cholesterol to be a part of the membrane of the cell. So, it would be a structural component of the cell membrane that is the most important function of cholesterol. Apart from that, if we have to synthesize certain hormones like the steroid hormones, the cholesterol is the one which would act as a precursor for the production of these steroid hormones. That shows how important cholesterol is. Though we always say cholesterol is bad, but remember if we have to produce the hormones which are steroid in nature, that is when we require cholesterol. So, it is not only that certain uh, the food substances which needs to be absorbed require uh, cholesterol in the form of acids. So, these are the important uh, functions of cholesterol. Apart from this, cholesterol is required for the production of vitamin D. We know that vitamin D is a sunshine vitamin. So, when you have cholesterol deposited on the skin, when sunlight falls on the skin, that is when you have the production of the active form of vitamin D. So, these are the functions of cholesterol. Now, as I said, cholesterol is very important. So, most of the diet is the one which has got cholesterol in it. 
For example, 30 percent of the cholesterol what we get into our body is from the food that we eat. The food most of the times it is the animal food which contains lot of cholesterol. So, you have meat, eggs, certain dairy products all of these are the rich source of cholesterol. So, that would add to around 30 percent of the cholesterol which your body has. Now, the rest 70 percent is produced in the body itself. Our body has the capacity to produce cholesterol and that is what happens during the de novo synthesis of cholesterol. So, we have various precursors that are there. By them, we are able to synthesize cholesterol. Now, that accounts for 70 percent. So, totally 70 plus 30 becomes 100 percent. 70 percent is got from our body itself and 30 percent from what we eat. Now, there is something what is called as total cholesterol. So, there we I already said that lipid profile includes total cholesterol, there is something what is called as LDL cholesterol, there is HDL cholesterol. It means that cholesterol can be taken together as LDL cholesterol plus the HDL cholesterol. Now, if I say total cholesterol, it is the measure of the total amount of cholesterol in the body, wherever it is, either it is as a part of LDL or maybe it is a part of HDL, whatever it is, these two things together either as LDL cholesterol or HDL cholesterol, these two things together is what constitutes the total cholesterol. Now, if I have to measure my total cholesterol, it means that um, it is not necessary that I should always be fasting. It can be taken during any time of the day and it does not require fasting, but sometimes when we ask for the test as a part of a lipid profile. As I said, lipid profile includes so many tests. If we are including total cholesterol as a part of the lipid profile test, then you have to have a minimum 12 hour of fasting. No food, no drinking except uh, for water here and there, a consumption of water is allowed, but apart from that, no consumption of tea or milk is allowed. 12 hour fast is a must. That is why patients are advised for an overnight fast when they come for a lipid profile testing. But if I have to do a total cholesterol alone, then there is no requirement of fasting. Now, once we know that the cholesterol must be within the range which should be less than 200 milligram per deciliter, when it crosses above 200 milligram per deciliter, that is when it is called as hypercholesterolemia. Hyper is high cholesterol in the blood. Emia always stands for blood. So, when there is excess cholesterol in the blood, you call it as hypercholesterolemia. And there are a few conditions in which this hypercholesterolemia is seen. Most of the times hypercholesterolemia is asymptomatic. That is why routinely we are supposed to get our lipid profile done so that we know if our lipids are within the normal range or no. If our cholesterol is within that within 200 milligram per deciliter, that is what is important because it does not come out with a specific symptom. It is most of the time asymptomatic. And uh, being asymptomatic, there is a high chance of having a coronary heart disease. One fine day, the patient might get a heart attack or finally end up having a stroke or even might die of myocardial infarction. So, it is just so silent that it is not at all seen as a symptom. If you have any other disease, it is actually seen as a symptom, but when you have high excess cholesterol in the blood, it is not seen. It is there in the blood unless we do a lipid profile routinely, we will not be able to see the baseline cholesterol what we have. Now, if you look at the causes for this excess cholesterol in the blood, there are many. The most important cause is diabetes mellitus. People who have got diabetes, they have got a chance of having hyperlipidemia uh, and that too especially excess in cholesterol. Whenever there is a patient with obstructive jaundice, there again there is excess cholesterol. There can be hypothyroidism, nephrotic syndrome and familial hyperlipoproteinemias, which could lead to uh, excess cholesterol in the blood. Now, these are all the causes wherein you can have excess cholesterol, which is cholesterol above the levels of normal. Now, if you look at the other end of this uh, range, where you have a low levels of cholesterol, lower than the normal, that is when you call it as hypocholesterolemia. Hypo stands for low levels of cholesterol. Now, that could be seen in one kind of anemia called pernicious anemia. If an individual suffers from hemolytic jaundice, that is when there can be low cholesterol. If there is hyperthyroidism, remember when there is hypercholesterolemia, one of the cause was hypothyroidism. If you have hypocholesterolemia, one of the causes is hyperthyroidism. The other causes could be a malabsorption syndrome. So, those are the causes of low levels of cholesterol in the blood. 
So, so far whatever we have seen is we have looked at the definition of lipid profile. We have seen what are these lipid profiles, they are normal levels and one of the most important lipid was your cholesterol. We have seen what happens when there is excess cholesterol, what happens when there is or what are the causes for these hyper and hypocholesterolemias. Moving on to the next important fat which is there in our body that is the triacylglycerol. Now this is one of the most important form of fat and uh, this gives us a uh, lots of energy that is what is triacylglycerol. Some of these the purpose of this triacylglycerol is that some of them they are there in the blood and their purpose is to give us some energy and that helps our muscles to work. Now if I have to collect a blood sample for the estimation of triglyceride I need to have a patient who has got a 2 LR fasting because if you have taken a fatty meal then it would give me a highly elevated levels of fat, highly elevated levels of triacylglycerol which we do not actually which will not actually tell us if the triglyceride is actually within the normal limit or if it is above. So, we need to have a patient come to the hospital with exactly 2 hours of fasting. There should not be a fatty meal, there should not be a high carbohydrate meal because they would affect the levels of triacylglycerol. Now, if you look at the triglycerides, there are certain conditions in which they can be elevated. I said that 12 hours fasting is very important because the diet what the individual has consumed the last night is very important. Say if the individual has consumed too much of fat the last night, definitely his triacylglycerol will be more when I collect the samples the next day and that too if I ask the patient to fast for 12 hours and the patient does not do a fasting for 12 hours, say he fasts for around 7 hours, that will show a false elevated levels of triacylglycerol. Now, that is very important when we collect the sample for the estimation of triacylglycerol. Patients with diabetes mellitus, again the type 2 diabetes mellitus where you have non-insulin dependent that is the type of diabetes that is type 2. Obese individuals have excess Tg, alcohol consumption leads to excess triacylglycerol, certain types of hyperlipidemias like type 1, type 4 and type 5 they also lead to an excessive triacyl glycerols. Apart from that there is pancreatitis and gout which could lead to an excess triacyl glycerol. Sometimes it is normal to see excess triacyl glycerol when a woman is pregnant. So, that could be a physiological reason when you could have an excess triacyl glycerol. Certain drugs could also influence the levels of triacyl glycerol like your tri uh, the diuretics or the steroid hormones. Now, the next component of the lipid profile is the lipoprotein. As the name indicates, lipoprotein means these are the proteins which are there to carry the lipids. Now, they can be of various types. Basically, they are composed of these things. They are made up of cholesterol, cholesterol ester, triacylglycerol, phospholipid and protein. There are these many types of lipoproteins like VLDL, LDL, HDL and chylomicron and their function as mentioned earlier is to transport the lipids in the blood to various organs. Since lipids are on their own are not able to pass to the blood, so require a carrier to carry them to the different parts of the body. That is what is the function of the lipoprotein. Now, this we already know what are the functions of the various types of lipids uh, the lipoproteins that are there. If you look at the chylomicron, the function of chylomicron is to carry the exogenous lipids, the lipids which come into the intestine to the liver. If you look at the function of VLDL, they carry the triacylglycerols which are produced in the liver to the other tissues. Then the VLDL gets converted into IDL and LDL and that is what is taken up by the other tissues. If you look at HDL, HDL is the one which will carry the cholesterol which are deposited in the peripheral tissue and then they get it back to the liver. So, if you look at this picture, it tells us very clearly that LDL is supposed to be a bad cholesterol. What it does is that it takes the cholesterol from the liver and goes and deposits into the peripheral tissues. Whereas, HDL cholesterol is good, whatever LDL has deposited the cholesterol into the peripheral tissues that is taken up by the HDL and that is got back into the liver. So, it does not allow the deposition of cholesterol in the coronary arteries. So, HDL does not allow the cholesterol to get deposited into the peripheral arteries and therefore, as I said high levels of HDL is always good. It does not allow your arteries to be clogged with too much.